Hello and welcome to this video on identifying type errors with typing rules in the Hindley Milner type system. This is part of a mini sub series on the Hindley Milner typing rules, which is part of a wider series on Hindley Milner. If you haven't seen the previous videos, I'd recommend you go and watch those. In the previous videos, we looked at typing proofs, where we found that if we combine the constraints through unification, we can end up solving one of these type trees. So we ended up substituting it like this, and we found that the type of odd age was bool. If we have a different expression, let's say odd hungry, and hungry is some boolean, which is like true or false, like whether something is, is hungry, and odd is the same function which uh, took an integer and returned whether it is odd or not, so int to bool, and hungry is a bool. This expression, let's see what happens when we try and evaluate the type. So as before, we see it's a function application. So we can split it into the function and the argument. We're creating new type variables as we go as well as recording what the constraints between these type variables are. So for example, that t0 should unify with t2, the return type of the function, and t1 should unify with t3. So the input type of the function should unify with the argument passed into the function. We then add both the var rules. So again, creating new type variables and saying what should unify. And finally, also figuring out what these things are actually in the context, so we can find out, say, t5 should be bool and t4 should be integral. So as before, let's try going through all these different pairs and see what happens. So let's start with t0 and t2. These should unify. We get the substitution from t0 to t2. We're going to apply that. Well, there's only one t0, so we'll update that to a t2, and we're done with that. Let's do the next one, unifying t1 and t3. Well, that gets a mapping from t1 to t3. We have one t1, we'll update that to a t3. We're done with that one. Next one, we've got a t3 to t2, unifies with t4. Well, that gives us a substitution t4 maps to t3 to t2. That updates our t4. Next, we've got this one, t3 to t2, unifies with int to ball. Again, we get the substitution t3 maps to int, and we can update that t3. And then we've also got the mapping t2 to bool, and that can update our t2. So at this point, we figured out that the type of odd hungry is bool. But remember, in the last episode, I said we had to process all these and make sure all of these things that we expect to unify do actually unify. Otherwise, we might be making a mistake, and there might be a type error. So let's keep going. Well, we've got int and t5, so we can unify that, and that gives us the mapping t5 to int. So we'll update that. And then we've got int uh, should unify with bool. We try and unify these two. But these are fundamentally different type function applications. So again, go back to the video on monotypes if you're confused on what I mean by that. But effectively, it's not possible to unify these. These are different types. And so we say, no, there's no unifying substitution. There's an error here. We aren't able to unify all these things that should unify. And therefore, there must be a type error in this expression. And that's how we can find type errors and warn users when they have type errors. So you can see how this can be the start of a type checking algorithm or type checking process. We haven't been super specific on how we choose which rules to apply, but effectively, you know, if we pick the right rules, we've now figured out a way to combine the constraints, even if we don't know all of them at the outset. And we've also found a way to find errors in our type proof. So let's look at this unification error. Where exactly does it come from? Well, if we look at the unification algorithm, we presented this previously uh, in a video. We've got this uh, unification function between two monotypes. And there's this if statement, uh, so the other things don't apply here, but where they're both type function applications, uh, because int and bool are type function applications with zero arguments. If they're different type functions, well, then we throw some error saying that they failed to unify. And so this is where our failure comes from. And again, these two were our type function applications, just going back to the definition of monotypes. Thanks for watching this very short video on type errors. You've just seen an example of where we can find a type error in a proof using that process of unifying the different constraints that we get from trying to build out a type tree. In the next video, we're going to go back to the typing rules directly and have a look at function abstraction.